All right, uh, let's go ahead and finish this out. It's our last section, so let's take a look at this. We're gonna do the sum and difference formulas. Uh, if you look here, uh, you can go through and try and verify all this geometry yourself if you want. But basically, uh, we're gonna assume these are true and we're gonna label this as uh, one. This little section here is two, and then this one down here is three. And if you see, uh, we can see that this side here, side one, plus side two is gonna to equal to side three here. And so I'm gonna go back and we're gonna do that right here. We can say that one plus two equals side three like that. And then that tells us that one equals uh, three minus two. And therefore we can write uh, uh, this one here, which is Sorry, you can't even see anymore. One is cosine alpha plus beta, and that's gonna equal three, which is cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. And this is one that you should definitely know. Very, very useful. So make sure you, you know, put it on a note card or something and get that one memorized. Uh, comes in handy quite a lot. For our next picture, we're gonna go ahead and label this side. Let me change my color here. We're gonna call this side one, this little one here two, and this one here I'm gonna call three. And by looking at that, we can say that one equals two plus three in this case. So one equals two plus three, and of course I mean side one equals side two plus side three, not the number one. And so then we can do some uh, replacement there. One is cosine of alpha minus beta, and then that's gonna give us cosine alpha times cosine beta uh, plus sine alpha times sine beta, okay? And there it is. There's another extremely useful trig identity. And so you're gonna make sure you wanna know that one as well uh, so that you can use it as we go forward. So let's take a look at an example. First, we're gonna find, we're gonna, we're gonna find the exact value of cosine of pi over 12 by using pi over 12 equals pi over three minus pi over four. See, pi over 12 is not one of the values that we know from the unit circle. We know pi over fours, pi's over threes, pi's over sixes, those kind of things. Uh, but we don't know pi over 12. But since pi over 12 equals pi over three minus pi over four, we can take advantage of this. We can basically say that cosine of pi over 12 is gonna equal cosine of pi over three pi over three minus pi over four. And if you want, try to get those to have the same denominator, put them together and you'll get pi over 12. It'll be uh, four pi over 12 minus three pi over 12 when you, when you have, make them have the same denominator. Um, so anyway, we have that. Well then, great, what do we do with that? Because we still don't know. Well, we use our trig identity and this was our one from the previous page for the difference here. So it's this one here in green. So cosine alpha, cosine beta plus sine alpha times sine beta. So we can make this equal to cosine of pi over three times the cosine of pi over four uh, plus the sine of pi over three times the sine of pi over four. And then we can just use our unit circle because these are all values we actually know so we look here, we're just going right here in this first quadrant. We have pi over four, so that's that middle one. And it has, uh, oops, it has square root of two over two, square root of two over two. And then we have pi over threes, so that's these ones right here, right above it, the 60 degree ones. And it's gonna have one half square root of three over two as its coordinates. So cosine of pi over three is simply that square root of two over two, cosine, I'm sorry, that was, I wrote that under the cosine of pi over three, that's square root of two over two is here. 
cosine of pi over 3 is this 1 half right there, 1 half. And then if we come over here, sine of pi over 3 is going to be this square root of 3 over 2. And then the sine of pi over 4 is, again, it's just that square root of 2 over 2. Okay? And so we end up with something like that, and we can start multiplying everything together. This, these two multiplied together give us square root of 2 over 4. These two multiplied together gives us uh, square root of 6 over 4. And so then we end up with square root of 2 plus square root of 6 over 4. And that's about as nice as we're going to get that one to look. But there you go. We actually have something uh, that we could, we could figure out there. All right, so now let's take a look at the sum and difference formulas for sine. We did them for cosine. I'm not gonna go through all the craziness again, but you can do the same basic sort of thing and you'll get from this first picture, again, you should be able to get that, here, let me do it in a different color. Sine of alpha plus beta, and you can try doing this. It's something very similar to what I did. Just you know, I'll even tell you this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, so 1 equals 2 plus 3, uh, and you'll get sine alpha times cosine beta plus cosine alpha times sine of beta. So there's our first one there. That's a big important one. And then the next one uh, you can do again. I'm not going to label the sides for you this time, but use the top and bottom. Just a little hint. And you should get then that the sine of alpha minus beta is equal to sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. There you go. All right, and there's the two that you need to know for the sum and difference for sine. And again, you know, sit down, get them memorized, and, and go forward using it, okay? So let's take a look here. It says, prove the identity sine of pi plus x equals negative sine x. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We're going to do sine of pi plus x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to treat this here. Let me switch to color. We're going to treat this as alpha this is beta. So alpha is pi, beta is x, and so this is the sum formula, which comes from right here. It's this first one right here, and so we're going to go ahead and use that, and we're going to get sine of pi, that's the sine of alpha, times the cosine of x, because beta is x, plus the cosine of pi, because again, alpha is pi, and sine of x because x is beta. And so we end up with these here. <coughs> Excuse me. The sine of pi, uh, you should know from your unit circle, is actually zero. And so we have zero times cosine of x. So that's going to just go to a zero. Then we have a plus cosine of pi. That's actually negative one, which you should know from your unit circle, times sine of x. So it's just going to end up being negative sine x and there you go it worked out uh, worked out nicely for us and you could do it uh, if you wanted to have tried this out say you wrote x plus pi instead of pi plus x you could have switched and flip flopped which was alpha and which was beta and you still would end up getting the same result uh, feel free to give that a try if you want and, and see that you'll still end up with negative sine x so it really doesn't matter which one you pick is alpha and beta so in other words what i'm saying is if you had done x plus pi and said this was alpha and this was beta and then gone through and done it, you still would get negative sine x. It won't make a difference uh, which is alpha, which is beta. All right, so I'm not going to go through deriving these, but here are some more formulas for you to know. Uh, the sum and difference formulas for tangent. So you need to know tan of here, it's all u and v, so I'll use u, v. Uh, it could be alpha and beta, it doesn't really matter equals tan of u uh, minus tan v over top of 1 plus tan u times tan v. Okay, I hope my u's and v's look different enough. 
So there's one for you. Then you can also have, <coughs> excuse me, tangent of u plus v equals tan of u plus tan of v over one minus this time tan u u times tan v okay and so notice those two are very similar you just switch you flip-flop the plus and minus signs uh, from numerator and denominator uh, double angle formulas so you could imagine uh, if we used sine of x plus x, so x is both alpha and beta, we end up with sine x times cosine x plus cosine x times sine of x. And then this is just going to tell us that the sine of 2x, and you see there we have sine x, cosine x, and cosine sine, that's just sine times cosine, is 2 sine x cosine x. So that's our double angle formula. Again, if you actually know um, our sum and differences for sine, if you know the sum for it, you can just basically just do that substitution every time and come up with it. And then you can see here, here are a few other ones. These are ones that you should be very familiar with, uh, you know, going forward and, and using them. So practice with them, use them during the homework and all that kind of stuff. And then we can move on. Let's try an example of using some of these. So if cosine theta equals negative 3 fifths and theta is in quadrant 2, quadrant 2, find the exact values of sine of 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, and tan 2 theta. So it's similar to what we've done before, except this time we want sines of 2 thetas and cosines of 2 thetas and such. So if here is our unit circle, here is our unit circle, get that centered a little more nicely. This is quadrant two. So first thing we need to do is find sine uh, and, and so on and so forth. So let's, let's go ahead and do that since we have cosine. Because if you remember all these, they, they are kind of dependent on that. So oops, find sine of theta first. And so we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one which means sine squared of theta equals one minus cosine squared of theta, which means sine of theta equals the square root of one minus cosine squared of theta, with our little plus or minus out in front. And since we're in quadrant two, all of the signs are positive, right? Because over here, it's negative positive for our sign conventions there, and all the y values are positive, which means the signs are positive, which means we can ignore the negative and just say it's square root of one minus cosine squared theta. If it had been quadrant three, we would have taken the negative result instead. So this is in quadrant two, all right? So sine has to be positive there. And so we can go ahead and say that sine of theta equals the square root of one minus negative three-fifths squared, and that's going to be square root of one, negative three-fifths squared is nine-twenty-fifths, so minus nine-twenty-fifths. It's the negative got squared, so that's why we're still, it's gone. And then we have one minus nine-twenty-fifths, which is 25 over 25 minus nine-twenty-fifths, which is sixteen-twenty-fifths. And square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5. And so there we go. We have what the sine is. So now we have sine and cosine. We can start doing these double angle ones. So let's start with sine of 2 theta. And that's going to equal uh, 2 cosine theta sine theta, just like that. And that'll give us 2 times cosine theta we were given is negative three-fifths, and sine, we found, is four-fifths. And that then just gives us, multiply this all together, negative 24 twenty-fifths. So there is our first sine of two theta. So we found that one. So now let's do cosine of two theta. Cosine of two theta is, uh, 
just going to be, uh, it's going to be, it's, it's a difference of our, our sine and cosine, so it's going to be cosine squared minus sine squared. which is going to equal uh, negative 3 fifths squared minus our 4 fifths squared, which is just going to equal 9, they're both over 25, so 9 minus 16 over 25. We can combine them because they have the same denominator. And then 9 minus 25 is negative 7 twenty fifths. So there's that one. So we've got cosine of 2 theta. Now tangent of 2 theta. Uh, so we need tan 2 theta. We need it in terms of just that. Well, this one turns out to be uh, whatever it is. 2 tan theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. And that's just from previous page there with, uh, with our charts. So we need to know what is tangent theta. And tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Sine of theta is 4 fifths from above. And cosine is negative 3 fifths. That was given. And so this will end up equaling negative 4 thirds. So there's our tangent, which means we can actually start plugging in here. 2 times negative 4 thirds over 1 minus negative 4 thirds squared, okay? So, <laughs> this will become uh, this is negative 8 thirds over, we want, this is going to end up being 16 over 9, so we'll make this 1 into 9 over 9, so they have the same denominator, and then that'll equal negative 8 thirds over uh, negative 7 ninths and then we can do negative 8 thirds times negative 9 over 7 so like that and then the negatives are going to cancel out 9 over 3 is just 3 right so this cancels becomes a 1 this becomes a 3 the negatives turn into positives and we're left with 3 times 8, which is 24. That wasn't a very good 4. 24 over and then just 7. Okay? There's our answer for that one. There's tan of 2 theta. Okay? Uh, I know it seems like a lot, but let's do a few more formulas. I will not go through uh, deriving these for you. If you really want them derived, uh, let me know, and I can send you something. But otherwise... There are the power reducing formulas. You just need to know how to use them. Uh, I'm not expecting you to have all these memorized except for the trig, uh, the trig, uh, uh, what is it? Not the, the Pythagorean identities. You should know that one. The sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, and then it's two other little variants. Um, but these ones, you know, the ones we're seeing here today, you, you'll be given. So sine squared equals one minus cosine two x over two, and all these things, cosine squared equals that. Uh, we also have the half angle formulas. Again, I won't go through deriving them for you, but you should definitely be familiar with them and trying to use them. Uh, and so take a look at them. They're very good. So if you end up with something you have to double up, like say you had to take the, you know, that cosine of something, you can start doing these kind of things. You can double it and figure them out. So let's take a look and show you, uh, show you some use of this. So here's an example. Given that sine of theta equals negative 5 thirteenths, and theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2, which immediately tells us between pi and 3 pi over 2, um, that's in quadrant 3. 3. And it says find the exact values of sine of theta over 2 and tangent of theta over 2. Okay? So uh, let's give that a try. Uh, if we look here, actually, I think I'm going to leave this one for you to kind of try with the above, but think of this. If here's our unit circle, okay, the thing you need to be thinking about is theta is over here. Theta is in quadrant three, right? 
So where's theta over 2 going to be? So remember, this is around at pi. This is 3 pi, 3 pi over 2. This is at pi <coughs> over 2, excuse me. Well, if theta is here, theta over 2 is going to be up here. All right, so there's my little hint to you. Give this a try, and I'll leave this one in the notes for you uh, in case you need it and you want to try any of it, okay? Uh, the last page here is some additional problems if you want some more practice work on it outside of the homework. And then also here is just a summary table of all the trig identities that we are using here. Again, I wouldn't expect you to know this. Uh, you'd be given something like this, uh, you know, in the places where I would expect you to know it, okay? Uh, that's pretty much it. Remember, take a look in the notes for the solution to this one uh, if you're, you know, after you try it, okay? But use some of the stuff we've been doing. That's all.